Good afternoon, everybody. I'm George Cipolaeus. I'm one of the partners at the Long Island Plastic Surgical Group. I'm here with Angela Papalia to uh, discuss um, some questions regarding our breast cancer patients and uh, hopefully inform people of their options moving forward in this entire process. Thank you so much, Dr. Zipolaeus. Um, I'm Angela Papali. I'm the Assistant Director of the Adelphi Breast Cancer Program. I'm a licensed social worker, and it's wonderful to be here to have this opportunity to talk with Thank you. Thank you so much for having, allowing me to talk with you today. Thank you. So in your experience, in your many years of doing this incredible work, when a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, there are so many things going through her mind and so many appointments. What are someone's options for breast reconstruction after a breast cancer diagnosis? So we live in a time where things are just getting better and better in medicine and there are many options. And what we have found is we are now able to tailor our reconstructive process around the patients. So it's a very daunting diagnosis and I know that a lot of women, their minds begin to spin afterwards, which is very, very normal. But the nice thing is that with the reconstruction, they will meet with people and we can definitely move forward at their pace with what they want. Broadly speaking, there's two types of breast reconstructions. One is called autologous, where we use the tissue from the patient's own body to recreate the breast mound. And the other type is what's called implant-based. And that's where we use um, the newer types of implants, which are silicone-based, to recreate the breast mounds. That's incredible. You know, there are so many different choices, more than ever. Yes. And I think it can be so empowering for individuals to be able to be presented with the different options. That being said, typically, what is the recovery like with these very specialized different types of reconstructions? So the recoveries, as we said, we, we split them into two broad categories and we can split those recoveries into two categories as well. With the implant-based reconstructions, the surgeries are usually a little bit smaller. Um, sometimes the implants go above the muscle, in which case it's a one-day hospital stay and the patient's usually back to normal within two weeks. If the implant is underneath the muscle, again, it's a one-day hospital stay patient goes home they'll feel much much better within a week but because that muscle was cut to put the implant under they need about a month's worth of recovery with the autologous reconstruction because we're moving skin adipose tissue and sometimes even muscle to a different part of the body the patient will stay in the hospital for about three to five days and then you know within another week they'll feel like themselves again but again because the muscle has been cut they need about a month worth to recover that's understandable. Yes. For individuals that are concerned about the recovery, understandably so, right. and perhaps we do hear this from people who call the hotline on our program, you know, they say, I, I live alone or my family's not very close to me geographically. What kinds of services are available for patients post-operatively that they can speak with their doctor about? So we have a wonderful support system, and especially since we do these procedures in a hospital, we like to get um, social workers involved from the very beginning. So I will have the social worker meet with the patients, usually on the first post-operative day after they're out of anesthesia and after they're done with the surgery so they can then focus on what their needs are. And I, as the plastic surgeon, speak with the social worker. I let them know what the patient will need. This way they can tailor a home health aide or a nurse to come to the uh, house once a day or once every other day, depending on their needs. That's so incredibly reassuring because I think more than ever when a patient is going through a diagnosis and these very specialized surgeries, it's important to remember that you're not alone and patients really are at the center of the treatment team and there are so many people in that circle to best help the individual move forward and mobilize. I, I couldn't agree more. The patient is the center and not only do they have a large support system within the hospital, but outside of the hospital, we can help them with that, not only from the nursing standpoint, but we as the physicians, our PAs, our nurses are always available to them to help them with what they need. And your support groups and these other survivors and, as you had said, heroes are always willing to help. It's so true. And at our program, we're always 
always happy to be there to answer the call. We have our professionally trained and supervised volunteers who are all breast cancer survivors, and they really understand what it's like to walk in someone's shoes who's gone through breast cancer, who's had that very specific type right. of reconstructive surgery, to really be able to have this open and honest conversation with somebody that's not in the family, all the barriers are broken down, and you can have a frank discussion about what was it like for you, because nobody can understand that better than the survivor. 100%, and then that's what I tell a lot of our patients. If they need to speak with someone, we can always help them. We can always try to connect them with someone that we have operated on who's willing to speak with them. And I think, like you said, even though they're not blood related, this is a family. Most of these survivors consider themselves a family and they're always happy to discuss what their thought process was, what led them to that type of reconstruction and what the recovery was for them. That's fantastic. And I know our patients that have come to you that we've heard about from referrals from the community and people from the practice that have reached out for support groups, they just speak, it speaks volumes, the compliments. That, well, thank you very much. It's just it's very amazing nice to hear. because they see, feel so cared for here at the practice and they know they can reach out to you as the physician and all of your team members um, every step of the way, which is so important. Well, thank you. No, that's, it's great to hear. And that's what we're here for at the, uh, at the end of the day, we, we treat people and we like to treat people as we would want our families treated. So we want them to get through this as easily as possible and we want them to be treated as our family would be treated. Yeah, that's a wonderful yeah. sentiment. Very, very sweet. You know, one of the things that we do hear from patients often, um, when people are going through reconstruction and they have spoken with an oncologist and they have had their diagnosis, they're in this, this limbo of, of all of these appointments. Um, people really are curious, what is it like if they're anticipating treatment, be it chemotherapy or radiation, what does that look like for somebody that's very interested in pursuing reconstruction? Does it need to be delayed at times? Can you walk me through what that of would course. look like for a patient? So there are a lot of options we have. If a woman needs to go through chemotherapy or radiation therapy, oftentimes what we do is what's called an immediate delayed reconstruction. Mm -hmm. So the oncologist will do the mastectomy. We will put tissue expanders in place and that keeps the skin expanded for when we do the final reconstruction. The reason we do that is radiation therapy especially can change the quality of the tissues dramatically. Mm -hmm. And we don't like to radiate the implants and we don't like to radiate the um, tissue that we're bringing into the area because it can change the quality, it can shrink the tissues, and at the end of the day, we're trying to bring back that normalcy to the patient. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we put these tissue expanders in, let them undergo their chemotherapy radiation, we let them heal, and then we can continue with the process. That's very reassuring because I think so often patients feel this rush and it's understandable, uh, but it's so important to know that there are so many of options. Of course, yeah. Some, some people still opt to get it done in one surgery. Mm -hmm. However, it, like you said, there are always options and there are always things that we can do to continue the reconstructive process, but go at the patient's pace. That's very encouraging. I appreciate you taking us through yeah. that. Women are wondering, should they postpone their reconstruction if they're interested in pursuing fertility preservation? This comes up more often these days because quite honestly, we're hearing from more younger women that are being diagnosed with breast cancer. Of course, no, and that's very understandable as well. We will dis we discuss that not only with the surgical oncologist, the oncologist who will be doing the mastectomy, we discuss that with their medical oncologist, the oncologist who will be prescribing them their chemotherapy um, and possibly the radiation oncologist. It is very important, especially for younger women, to know that they do have the option of doing that. And what I usually say is, of course, surgery affects the uh, chemical cycles in the body. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that everything is done appropriately for them to maximize both their results from a reconstructive standpoint, but also from a fertility standpoint. So for those women, I always tell them, if you want to do these smaller surgeries, like those delayed immediate, recon I'm sorry, the immediate delayed reconstructions, we can put the tissue expanders in, and then they can go through their fertility um, medications, speak with their fertility uh, physicians, and then move forward after that. Okay, 
That's wonderful. You know, what's really, I think, inspiring is that the patient is joined in this journey with the treatment team and all of the physician here at LIPS because it's so easy to forget that you're not alone when you go right. through a breast cancer diagnosis. And you know, the emotional healing is just as important as the physical healing. I, I couldn't agree more. We have to treat the patients as a whole because just because the skin is healing well, just because the breast reconstruction is healing well, doesn't mean that everything else is healing well. So we always have to treat the patient as a whole and make sure they get not only the physical support, but the emotional support that they need. And I could not agree with that sentiment. And I, and I know that your program has so many options to help with that. Thank you. And you know, because we're receiving just so many different kinds of needs from people in the community, we're really happy to be able to offer very diverse but specialized support groups. You know, perhaps women who are under 40, we have a very active group. Women who are dealing with an advanced stage disease or breast cancer, newly diagnosed patients, and of course, bilingual support groups, Spanish language, because let's face it, everybody speaks all kinds of languages and we're here for everyone. Right. This is a melting pot and it is very important. To, and again, it's having people who can speak in their native tongues makes them feel more comfortable from the get-go, which is wonderful. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Zipolais, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. It was thank a pleasure. You.